The best boss fights in Wrath of the Witch King Classic. This is on the official WoW channel. Maybe, maybe Willy made this. I'm not sure. Let me let me see here. Raiding has always been Willy one of made my it. personal favorite things to do in World Warcraft. And now that Wrath of the Lich King Classic Whoa. is finally out, we're going to be encountering some of the most well-remembered encounters this game has ever seen. Welcome all, my name is Will E. Today we're checking out the best Willy. boss fights from every tier of Wrath Classic. Let's get straight into it. First of all, compared to Wrath back in 2008, creatures as well as bosses in Nax Ramus have had their health and damage boosted up by about 30% to allow True. for some more interesting interactions between players and bosses in the earlier weeks of the tier being available honorable mentions in that so real quick we have not had a single race to world first in classic wow yet where how can i put this where at least one guild did not wipe every single race we've had through vanilla or tbc there has been at least one guild during the race that did not wipe once do you understand what i'm saying so during today's race are all the guilds going to wipe at least once no no like Tier 7 is easy. Tier 7 is easy. There will be multiple guilds that do not wipe once today. Old War. Old War, though. I think we're going to see some wipes. I think we're going to see some wipes. Old War, yes. Grammas go to patchwork. Those buffed up hateful strikes are going to be the cause of many a wipe in the first few weeks, I can tell you that. Second is to Saperon, who drops one of the very few remnants of an attunement left in Wrath. The key to the focusing Iris will be needed to begin the Malagos encounter over in the Eye of Eternity in Coldara. Only one person Ooh. in the raid will need it though, so it's not going to be too tough to get. In Tier 7, you'll also face off against the likes of Kel'Thuzad for a second time perhaps, Malagos of course, and Sartharian as the end of Tier bosses. I think the last one has the most potential to be interesting though. So, as far as I'm concerned... Like, I don't know, I haven't talked to every good guild in the world, I'm not sure, but this is, I'm, I'm sure we all agree. World first today is constituted by clearing Nax 25, Malagos 25, and Sartharian 3D. If you just kill Sartharian, bor boring, it needs to be, it needs to be 3D. If you don't do 3D, then we don't give a shit what you did. It's gotta be, and also, and also Vault of Archimon. Also Vault of, no, who, no one gives a fuck about Vault of Archimon, yeah, true. As I Gotta would say, Sartharian is the big challenge of Tier 7. Found under Wormrest Temple, Sartharian's lair features a dynamic level of difficulty. Now, you can deal with the three drakes surrounding the central boss in advance, which is going to make the encounter considerably easier. But if you take on Sartharian leaving the drakes alive, he will gradually call them down to join the battle, adding their own mechanics into the fight, such as increasing damage taken from other mechanics significantly, catching eggs which spawn whelplings, or enraging the Boss. Mini whelps. Uterath Classic is a further health buff added through choosing to fight Sartharian alongside his drakes, making strategies to zerg him down as soon as possible much less viable early on. Defeating the three drakes variation of this boss adds many new pieces of loot to the table, amount, as well as titles. Ooh. Next, it's time for the Alduar part of the video. Let's start with Mimiron, one of the keepers of Alduar. Found midway through the raid after a tram ride to the colossal spark of imagination, this encounter begins with the keeper busy around his latest creation, the Leviathan MK2, a siege tank variation with several hard-hitting abilities such as Shock Blast, which will instantly dispatch any melee player too slow on their feet. Damn. As you gradually lower his health bar, the next stage and next create. Are we just gonna realize that old war hard modes are like fucking brain dead? Now that we're all highly advanced 2022 elite hyper gamers, is everything in old war gonna be so easy? It's all going to be so insanely easy. Nation will be revealed. The VX001 Anti-Personnel Assault Cannon, a giant two-armed machine which has signature abilities like Rocket Strike, which does a solid 5 million damage to anybody unfortunate enough to be caught by it, and <clears> spinning <throat> up, causing the entire raid to have to get behind the boss fast or be deleted. Oh, Next wow. phase has the aerial command unit floating from the central platform. Here, the raid splits, with ranged gradually damaging down the boss whilst being careful on three 
threat and melee dealing with bots on the ground. These bots will drop magnetic cores needed to ground the aerial unit and then everybody can DPS it down together. And once you've dealt with that, the final phase of the encounter begins as all three creations are bolted together to make Voltron, a mega boss uh -oh. that contains some of the toughest mechanics from each phase. So that's already a lot to deal with and that is the normal mode. You see the big red button in the back over there? Why don't you go and press that and see what happens? Didn't you see the sign that said do not push this Oh god. You've just activated one of Ulduar's hard modes, and a harder one at that. Firefighter puts an enrage of 10 minutes on the encounter and adds new mechanics, buffs all units' health, and most notably has fire constantly spawning throughout the encounter, adding a whole new level of difficulty to it. Wow, there's fire on the floor? Man, I wonder what you have to do. I wonder how you navigate that. I wonder I wonder I wonder how you are supposed to beat uh how you're supposed to beat that mechanic where there is a fire on the floor. Next up is an old oh, god, man. and how could he not make this list? After having driven all the other Titan Keepers to madness, and us having to set that right, it's clear no prison could hold the monster known as Yogg Saron. Ooh. The encounter can be accessed right at the end of the instant, starting off with summoning the boss himself by defeating- Huh? What's happening? The dog pooped on the stairs several gardens of yogg -Saron on top of Sarah. Kathy With yogg -Saron emerging, the real encounter begins. After a short period of time, portals the mind's eye materialize. Entering shows you several visions, including the forging of the dragon soul and the assassination of King Lane. Dispelling the illusions, you expose the brain of yogg -Saron. Oh, And once the brain team has done enough damage, you'll enter the final phase. Hey, Bando, this is thank the you. DPS thank race you. portion of the boss, where immortal guardians regularly spawn, who, as their name suggests, are you know, immortal, unless they get hit by a certain mechanic, that is. Also during this phase, yogg -Saron attempts to rapidly deteriorate the sanity of the raid. That's another mechanic special to this boss, actually. Sanity. Several mechanics will make you lose it, and a few gain it. And if it ever depletes entirely, you become insane and must be dealt with quickly. Kill There's him. also a lot of customization players have access to through the Titan Keepers, which you have already saved. Each of Mimiron, Thorum, Freya, and Hodia can assist you in the encounter with incredibly helpful effects like Freya's Sanity Well, which restores sanity to the player, or Thorin's Titanic Storm, which is the only way to permanently defeat immortal guardians. Oh. Attempting yogg -Saron with no aid from the Keepers increases the difficulty of the encounter significantly. The achievement for defeating him under these conditions is called Alone in the Darkness, and adds bonus loot, titles, and of course... Dude, that's impossible. I don't want to speak too soon on this, but I think that achievement is impossible. I think it's mathematically impossible. I don't think it's. I don't think anyone's going to be able to do that, considering all of the variables. Mimiron's head for the no loot way. table. An honorable mention here to Algalon no, no, the no Observer way. as well. This is a hard mode only boss that can be accessed after having cleared many of the other Holy hard mode shit. encounters in the raid. The kicker here is that this boss has a timer for how long players have before he will despawn for the remainder of the reset, and that's only one hour. Dude, race to world first Ulduar is going to be fucking insane. Insane. Also, it has to include all the hard modes. If you're not doing all the hard modes, then we don't care. We don't fuck with you. But race to world first hard mode old war. Holy shit, that's going to be insane. But so is tier 7, race to world first tier 7. Oh, and lore-wise, he's sending a message to essentially destroy the entire world, so no pressure. This visually impressive encounter has you quite literally fighting off space, featuring constellations, black holes, and collapsing stars. Though you, unlike space. other bosses we've gone over so far who have different levels of difficulty, this one will be a little bit trickier to see as he is hard mode only. Moving on from Ordoir though to Trial of the Crusader, there are a few memorable encounters here too, such as the Faction Champions, a kind of brawly PvE PvP crossover, having your faction take on the opposing one to prove your strength. And who could forget the opening voice line? You face Daraxus, Eladar Lord of the Burning Legion! Oh, it's like that's the meme! That's the that's the guy from the meme! I remember this guy! 
But the one to highlight here is Anuba Rack, the second time you will be fighting this boss during this expansion. The first time being an end boss of the dungeon, Ajon Narub, of course. <clears throat> this time around, he is a lot more challenging. One of his phases has him chase down players under the ground, aiming to impale them, all of the while the oh, raid wow. is dealing with adds and shooting down frost orbs to create safe permafrost zones on the ground. During the final phase, he... Dude, imagine you could buy one of these guys as a fucking mount. Blizzard. Listen, I hate to give you guys advice. If you sold a new and if you sold like a sixty dollar a new rack mount, you would make so much fucking money. Actually, they they like you know people would buy this. So it unleashes a leeching swarm, which on heroic difficulty drains 30% of players' current health every single second, meaning your entire raid's health bars are looking scarily low all of the time. And on top of there being normal or heroic for Trial of the Crusader, there are also achievements for defeating bosses with no wipes and even no deaths in the raid at all, both of which add various rewards, such Holy as titles, shit. mounts, and of course, bonus loot. And finally, we get to Ice Crown Citadel. And if there was one fight which you just cannot miss during this expansion, it has to be the guy on the front of the game box, Arthas Menethil, the Lich King. At the pinnacle of the Frozen Throne, after having battled through the enormous... I always thought it was weird that Bolvar is just like chained up. Yo, what's up? It's me, the Lich King, and here's my femboy fuck slave, Bolvar. I make him wear cat ears and a butt plug when I fuck him. <laughs> I keep him chained up above my seat. Arthas Menethil, <laughs> the Lich King. At the pinnacle of the Frozen Throne, after having battled through the enormous Ice Crown Citadel, this fight is the culmination of the entire expansion. The fight starts off instantly with several deadly mechanics that must be managed correctly, such as Necrotic Plague, applying a huge damage over time effect to a target, as well as Infest, meaning that healers have to be super on the ball, keeping the raid topped off. Holy Phase shit. 2 sees the iconic Defile ability enter the encounter, Counter. Think of it as like a mega death and decay, which expands each time it deals damage and can easily cover near don't, the entire don't stand platform in that. if handled incorrectly. Get out in of phase that. three, the Lich King attempts to harvest the raid souls and teleports them inside of Frostmourne itself, where they have to assist King Terranus in defeating a soul warden before they are returned back to the encounter. <laughs> At 10%, the big twist of the fight happens as Arthas casts Fury of Frostmourn, instantly killing every single member of the raid and preparing to resurrect, in his words, the gra- Dude, it's crazy that Zoval, aka the Jailer, planned all of this greatest fighting force Azeroth has ever seen. That is, until Tyrion calls on the light and finally breaks free from his icy tomb, and players are able to once and for all put an end to Arthas's Whoa! reign. There are varying levels of difficulty on this fight too, beyond- What if- why did, why did they make this his face? Uh -huh. Okay. Just normal and heroic. A buff will be applied eventually, allowing players to perform <laughs> up to 30% better in their combat role, which makes seeing this final battle of Ice Crown Citadel very achievable. And those are some of my picks from the most memorable bosses throughout Wrath of the Lich King. There are so many more that are great and are worth talking about too, so do let us know which encounters you're looking forward to doing again, or maybe for the first time Damn. ever. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you in Northrend. Nice one, Willie. It's on the WoW channel, though.